Hello, this is Hakudabin, and I am here with some more RFS Tumble, or because I like tumbling down the internet for fun and, and stuff, and also just because it's fun. You know, I don't need to explain myself to you, let's just get right into this. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hmm. Hang on, I gotta... Try and somewhat clean my glasses. If you find a milkshake in one yard and crack a cold one in another yard, which yard would the boys go to? Schrodinger's voice while cracking open a cold milkshake. We all know the milkshake brings the boys to the yard, versus the boys as a prerequisite for the cracking open of a cold one. But cold ones don't have the do not have any uh, inherent boy attracting abilities. Milkshakes, however, do. All else being equal, the boys would proceed to the milkshake ache yard. While it is possible to announce the presence of cold ones in the hopes of attracting boys. The pull of the milkshake is much more powerful by comparison. Mind you, all of this nonsense hinges on whether or not the boys are back in town. Oh my goodness! So many song re so many references. I actually don't know the cold one, but I know the milkshake and the boys back in town. Hmm. <sighs> I don't respect Christianity, same here, but they kind of popped off with cathedrals, but only for a purpose of having a cool backdrop for fighting horrible nightmare beasts. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mind fighting a monster in front of the Temple of Time, which is basically a church. You can't tell me it isn't. It looks like one anyway. At the grocery store. Can you give me x squared plus 4y plus of tomatoes and 2 times x squared plus 8xy right to the power of 3 of potatoes, please? I don't understand. Well, I don't give a frick. I didn't study in vain. Those are all numerals. You asked for a never-ending curve of tomatoes. Can I get never ending tomatoes? No! Oh, this is gonna be cute. Hi, I love you so much. Hi. He thinks he's being so smooth with his little face on my leg. I see you, villain. And which... Devastating realization, my two most prominent childhood anime crushes were probably Eris from Sinbad and Shaggy from um, Scooby-Doo. Some year old, old me was like, Eris, she's evil, but wow, she's so cool. And it also has Shaggy's ability to eat a giant sandwich. Awesome. <laughs> Wow, yeah. Deeply if Han by study that found human beings are less than fifty percent accurate in determining whether are they are being in in determining whether they are being flirted with. Look, I'm sorry, I'm zero percent accurate and dragging his average down. I had a girl look me in the eyes and tell me she wanted to go to bed while holding my hand, so I told her that she better go. Oh, then, and before she fell asleep. Wow. I assume that nobody will ever be dating me. That's me. I often see foxes referred to as cat dogs on Tumblr. I wonder if folks realize how true that actually is. There is from a, a phenomenon. Uh, 
and not a menon called convergent evolution that occurs when two taxonomically unrelated species exploit the same e ecological niche. The features are needed to take the best to take advantage of a given a niche are pretty much the same everywhere you go. Thus, over time, those species will become anatomic, anatomically and behaviorally similar, or even though they're completely unrelated. And foxes? Foxes are where you get when an ecosystem is so they have small or felines, so canine species evolves to take advantage of the ecological niche that would have been exploited by a small feline if one existed. In other words, a fox is literally what you get when a dog tries to cat. Conversely, hyenas are the eliform attempt at constructing a dog. Foxes and hyenas are the best. <sighs> a rough duo of a grimacing person labeled me opening a bottle of cycling cider labor, er, labeled cider that I actually got shook and the body old shoots a blast of cider labeled beam attack at a cat labeled Gertrude. Ow. Y'all have no idea how much I want a pizza right now. It's taking all of my willpower to save my money and not order one this instance of suffering getting stuff done today. Late stage capitalism is I want pizza, but Congress won't let me buy one. But I haven't tried. I'm going to call my Congress and see. Hmm, Ted Cruz isn't an answering. Still a coward, I see. I'm going to ask my governor now and tell him Cruz said it was out of his restriction, so he'll feel all important. Due to the city and his riches in God, he can afford order pizza. Someone picked up. This is how it went. I'm not reading the bottom text. Hello, I would like to request an audience with Governor Abbott. I'm sorry, I can relay a message and get have him get back to you in a call or email. Okay, thanks. Due to some recent, recent changes is and current economic uh, disparities in Texas, I've calculated that Governor Ab Abbott makes enough of a year to buy over 10,000 pizzas, for example. As a display of his claims to make efforts towards rebuilding the middle class, all I ask is, is that he buy me one single pizza. Incredulous laugh slash scoff noise. <laughs> oh, really? That's less than 0.0001% of his salary. Not even taking his enormous melt into consideration and will affect my voting decision next election cycle. My PayPal is insert paypal that we are not going to mention i'll let him know <laughs> now that bought me a pizza guess you could say they crushed my dreams plot twist the secretary sent me 15 dollars for making her laugh and because she hates working there the subject line said, Political Pizza. Oh my goodness, the secretary is better than an abbot. Sorry, but I kind of love of survival stories where being in a life or death situation doesn't bring people close together. You know, a real old survival story. I think it's hilarious when people continue to fight about their interpersonal all issues while the world is literally burning down less than five feet away. I enjoy it! When someone goes through unimaginable horrors, it barely makes it alive, and the people that have beat the way don't even try to pretend they don't almost otherwise. I think it's so funny when being unable to admit you're wrong kills more people than the literal apocalypse. I mean, that's kind of the entirety of what the president did in 2020, huh?
Imagine him getting so stressed out due to homework that he tries to snap his pencil in half, but he can't, so he just starts crying. Why does this look like a Jeopardy card? Right. Who is Light Yagami? Wrong person. That dude's just killing people with by writing names. What's weird is I'm usually a horribly awkward person in one to one conversations, but the moment I get any sort of stage or crowd attention, I'm in my element. And then the moment I get off the stage, I sit in room and read for about six, for sixteen hours. Town crier behavior. You hate me for my news of the going on in the neighbor or in Duchess and that L's. You know you do. And I think to myself, what a wonderful worm. Hey look, a worm. A wonderful worm. My Spotify literally won't let me stop listening to Hell Talk o California. It's not letting me play anything else. And every time I hit play, it's just Hotel California. Eagles wasn't lying. You can never leave. Dreadful. Oh dear, that is going to be hard to read. The normal amount of pain is zero. I don't know what to say here. The center enabled person an amount of pain without injury or significant exhaustion is so low that it will not register to most of you. It's the slightest twinge. I am so unequipped to explain this to y'all, but if you experience regular pain, you have chronic pain. I thought one to three was normal. Dang. You know, after going through like a few years from 9 to 14 where I had pain that was uh, as a uh, 9. Well, I only said 9 because they, they explained the 10 as being so bad I would want to cut off the limb. And I thought that would cause me even more pain than this. I don't want that. So I kind of just don't, don't, don't know oh, what the fuck pain is anymore. Because a pain that used to be 9 for me when it first started eventually got to the point of becoming a 0 until I went into remission, and now it's just gone. But I sometimes still get pain from like injuries and stuff. Anyway. I thought 1 to 3 was normal. Um, hmm. Uh oh. Nope. 1 sometimes, but that's it. Pain means that something is wrong. It's why it exists. Healthy people exist at 0 to 1 unless something causes pain. Yeah, I remember going to do physiotherapy after I messed up my shoulder. And as we were starting the first set, Eshin, she asked me about my pain level. And I go, my shoulder or like the general day-to-day -day stuff? And it's and if it's worse, my base level, I'd, my base level pain is 0 and go up from there, right? The look on her face as she very patiently explained that zero is always no pain, the star of the scale, and and is what day to day should be. Then she went through each level, what each level was with me to figure out where I was. Apparently, my day to day is four to five when I would have said two, with my shoulder an eight versus my initial guess of somewhere around six, which was eye opening. I just imagine an eye opening is a, is a different kind of pain. Apparently, I've been under uh, reporting my pain to dogs for years because I've had arthritis my whole life, and no one thought to actually explain that the normal amount of pain is none or how a pain scale works. So, yeah, if you're above a zero on a regular basis, you've got chronic pain, and honestly, you're probably underestimating the amount of pain you have. 
No, I'm always at a 10. It's not physical, though. Don't worry. I will not sleep until feminism has achieved examples of of those two guys or just some guys in movie. He's like character design that is funky, he possibly dumb as crap. Absolutely good time. These two demons from uh, Hercules, the um, candle and the clock from Beauty and the Beast. Five moments. Frick! I forgot the names. The pig and the muskrat from Lion King. I know the pig is my mom, but I forgot the muskrat's name. These two guys. These two guys. I want this for us. Beautiful. Every time you repost this, Cappy. A transphobic state legislator legislator dies. Happy Trans Visibility Day. Repost us at least a hundred times. We need to get rid of them all. Do it for me, please. Imagine living the life of a silent era comedian. Wake up, fall over, nearly get hit, get hit by a train, get chased by the police, fall off a building, nearly get hit by a train, get a kiss on a cheek, head blows again. Flows away. Nearly get hit by... Holy... What the fuck? There is so much wrong with this. This image is surrounded by negative energy. You're wearing shoes, but they're those weird feet shoes. And they have flip-flops on. What the heck is wrong with people? I already hate flip-flops because I hate how they feel. But this is just... Above and beyond to just make the most uncomfortable image ever. Sometime in the last week, my school put up a large banner dedicated to the happy face of... Emoticon. Smiley, first Earth emoted here, night September nineteenth, in nineteen eighty two. Nobody says it as nineteenth September. Nobody says that. And if you do, I will personally come over or, or to or wherever the heck you are, and slap you for daring to say that. Happy birthday, smiley face. It's a time of the year again where everyone unsay a happy 40th birthday, Smiley. Eleven forty-four is Scott E. Falman. Smiley. I've wrote this that the following character sequence for joke makers. Read sideways. Actually it is possibly a more economical to think things that are not jokes, given the current trend. For this use, uh, oh my goodness, this very well was containing ritual missions I invented in the smiley, and I'm obsessed with uh, with Amon's um, diction here. A joke, these jokesters. It's quick, it's easy, and it's free. Pouring river water in your socks. Why would I do that? It's quick, it's easy, and unlike everything else in this dang country, it's free! Just do it. Movies in which Jesse Eisenberg gets into a fight with a Brazilian character named, uh, named Eduardo. 
The only layer box list that ever mattered. Are they gay? Almost. The only other one that ever mattered. Boop. Holy. No one ever talks about Looney Tunes back in action, and that's a crime because, okay, Brennan and Fraser plays a stuntman who hates working with Brennan and Fraser. Did you see those mummy movies? I meant that more than Brandon, more than Brennan Fraser is. His dad is Timothy E. Dalton, who plays an actor most well known for spy -like films, who turns out to actually be a real spy and hides spy. I stuff behind a portrait of, of himself. So father and son have to team up to stop an evil genius played by a near unrecognizable Steve Martin, whose henchman is WWE star Bill Goldberg. By the way, Steve Martin is the head of the Acme Corporation. Yes, that Acme. The one you, and that, that you see making all of these things that they use. Oh, and among Martin's underlings are Ron Perlman and ha Robert Picardo. So anyway, our heroes end up at Area 52, which is run by Joan Cusack. And which houses all sorts of alien Nazis, including Triffids, this island, and the Earth Mutant, Robot Monster, and mother freaking Daleks! Plus, the twins from Get Gremlins 2 play the Warner Bros. Shaggy and Scooby chastise Ice Mountain Loot right over the live action Scooby Doo movie. Forky Pig and the Speedy Gonzales lament political correctness, killing their careers. Brendan Fraser gets to punch Brendan Fraser! Freaking plus! Plus, the whole time, he's accompanied by Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, and the whole thing was directed by Joe Dante, so you know that's a perfect fit. So, in conclusion, please watch Looney Tunes back in action. It will most likely change your life. Okay, I'm sold. I mean, yeah, what they said. <sighs> I just realized like 80% of my followers are sex bots. I thought a lot of pretty women just re really liked my fantasy vlogs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Culture my friend on your big date. No. Or an earpiece, except they already know what to do, and I am only making things worse. Their day is also being coached. Also, oh, by me. I'm trying to find common ground between these two, but they only know how to say what I tell them. They share many interests because they are all my interests. I know this is bad. I am not rooting this on purpose. I don't know if they're e even physically attracted to each other because they only know to reiterate the preferences I feed them. I am beginning to wonder who is the one in the control of this situation. I feel like the odd old man playing chess with himself in a Pixar short. So at least in the short, he was not meddling in two human lives. I just want to wingman for my pals. I never would have helped if I knew things would get this far off the rails. Have you ever played The Sims and gone back and forth between two characters forcing to re them to reciprocate feelings for each other? Well, imagine if you had no choice in the matter. I cannot do this any longer. I'm just, it's going to go silent. These two will have to figure it out for themselves. They're not saying anything. They're not even moving. They're not blinking. They're obviously messing with me. This has to be a prank. They still haven't blinked. Through the fuzzy security cameras, they look, they kind of look like dolls. Wait, what the, wait, no, what is it moving? Okay, fine. She fell over. She's broken. I have to go.
they were mannequins. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Kind of frustrates me when men complain that they don't want to receive casual comments like women cut. It's like, you want to know why I don't tell straight men that I like their shirt or their haircut or whatever? You really want to know? It's because too many straight men assume that literally any positive interaction with a woman, including smiling, is sign that she's into them. If, if, if they do decide that a woman's into them, a number of those men, maybe not the majority, but enough to make me scared, will be willing to go to pretty much any length to be in a romantic relationship with that woman, including harassment and stalking. This isn't, by the way, a hypothetical. I once had to literally bang on my door into my I, I restroom and drunkenly shouting my name because I showed the remotest interest in him. I've had dudes who know, who knew I'm a lesbian, who still thought I might want to go on, a, on dates with them just because I talked to them. I don't know of a single woman who has been accused of leading a guy on by smiling at him, which also has put several of them in real Ill danger. So I'm sorry, I guess, I don't want to risk, risk my personal safety so you could feel the eye of getting complimented. If it makes you, a man, feel really bad, then maybe you could try to fix the real problems of men seeing women only as sex partners and also stalking, hurting, and or killing women who rejected them. Damn. These posts go hard. Went to the shelter to pick up my newest foster or litter. And the woman goes, do you want two kittens or four? Like truly the most absurd question I've ever heard. And they need names. Um, you're supposed to offer gifts in threes and fives. Anyway, OP is going to die. As for the names, um, Molly, Sock, Puppet, Bob, you gotta have at least one that has a completely human name. <sighs> Why does my rabbit rub his face to my computer? Said glanced are located under a rabbit's chin. Rubbing with the underside of the chin is a rabbit's way of marking in their territory. Fuck you, Google. It's there. It's there. I don't care what anyone else says. It is always there. You can use that. That's more gender neutral and that's more accurate. That's less likely to exclude with people who are not out of his or her. Stop excluding people, please. It's not okay. Sorry, guys. This this blog is especially run by my, my rabbit. He claimed that zone along with my computer. Goodbye. The rabbit speak it. Anyway, I think that's enough. <sighs> if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow I might be doing a short video, I might be yelling less, I might be just having fun, I might just be being a silly goofball, I will do lot of things. I think this is coming out on the 1st, so if it does, I want to wish you a happy May. And also, happy 12 days until that game comes out. I know anyone who has any remote interest in the Zelda franchise is excited, including myself. Although I guess it would be 11 days. Who knows. Anyway, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.